went through some, a lot of things that never bothered me. I actually stood next to Ronald Reagan when he was President of the United States on a stage with the Beach Boys in Washington, D.C. on the 4th of July in front of 700,000 people. And he introduced me and I played the National Anthem by myself. Mm -hmm. I've had some big moments. I've been a very lucky man. It's just, you know, the doors on, door of opportunity doesn't always open. You gotta make sure when it does, you don't answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those 60s stories. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, where was I leading with this? <laughs> um, huh? The anthem. Oh, by the way, I just got asked to do another. I do two or three anthems a year for my favorite team, the San Francisco Giants. And they just asked me to do the, this year's home opener. So on April 9th, I'm going to be on the field doing the, the anthem again. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. Well, you too. You too. I got to do Willie May's 80th birthday. Oh, they invited me to come do that one. And they said, do something different. And then they invited me, brought my whole family in, and gave us a big skybox I got to share with Willie Mays. It was like, I was like a kid in a candy store. And uh, they, they said, do something different, because your anthem's going to be on live on ESPN around the world. It's a very big event for Willie's 80th birthday. Well, the next day was my 60th birthday. So we made a big event out of it. And I'm thinking, what can I do that's different? I've seen a thousand different anthems. I've played a bunch of them. I've played them different every time. And I thought, well, I play a lot of horns. I started on tuba. <laughs> I did boom, 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 boom. I played the first group to stand on tuba. And then when my daughter stand next to me, I rolled the tuba down to the ground and she handed me my marching trombone, which has got a short pal trombone. And I played the bridge. <laughs> And he put his number on it. He wrote number 24 on the bottom of it. His son walks over to me and goes, he hasn't signed his number in over 20 years. He said he'd never do that again. That box just went up 5,000 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, you could offer me a million bucks. This box, this box is one of my grandson. I'm sorry, man. I'm keeping this with Willie. He goes, see, I knew it was okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is how this whole story started. So I'm, I'm a pretty brave guy when it comes to those standing with my horn. You know, I, I can't dance unless I have my horn in my hand. My wife was completely a dancer, you know, she goes, come dance with me. I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is the scariest thing I do. I'm going to sing a song for you guys. This is uh, on the New Moon Dog album. And uh, the short story, uh, I went to uh, get my eyes examined. I should have had my eyes examined. <laughs> And they dilated my eyes, they looked inside, and the doctor's looking in there, and I'm going, the old friend, what you got going on there? <laughs> Did you have a stroke? I said, no. He goes, oh. I said, that's bad news? <laughs> that's not what I expected to hear was, oh. He said, yeah, well, you got a swelling in the back of your eye socket. If you haven't had a stroke, that means there's probably something growing in there you don't want in there, and we all know what that would be. And I'm going, uh, he said, yeah, you better go get that checked out right away. So I had Kaiser. Took a month to get in to get the x-ray, the MRI. Took another month for them to tell me what was they knew the next day. Good old Kaiser back then, right? And uh, they said, you know, you're okay. There's, there's nothing in there, literally. <laughs> I'm a trumpet player. There's not supposed to be anything in there. Anyway, I, for about 60 days, I thought for sure I was on my last months on this planet, and I was trying to be right every wrong I'd ever done, be nice to anybody I'd ever kicked in the... I was just trying to be a good guy, you know, and do all the right things. And uh, then I found out I was okay. I went to sleep for about 48 hours. <laughs> I, did. I slept for about two days. They said I kind of woke up once, but that was pretty much, I just really let release, let it go. When I woke up, I wrote this song. It's called, I Am the Monster from Under Your Bed. <laughs> and it's got some dark humor in it, but don't, you know, as long as you know, 
You might want to take your children out, Phil. Man. No, I'm just kidding. No bad words in it. It's just, you know, when you're all a kid, they, 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 you don't get out of bed. There's going to be a monster on your bed. You get out of bed, there's going to be a rabbit you know, So I, first five, six years of my life, I stayed in bed till that sun came up and I could look down there and I knew I was okay. So this is, but the scary thing about this is, I sing it. I hope it's not as scary for you as it is for me. But I'm going to do it anyway. This kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. 